A and AS level mathematics. Lesson 36, Calculus Part 7. Differentiation, looking at the stationary points. So in this lesson, we're going to look into what are stationary points, positive, negative and zero gradients, the introduction of d2y dx squared, and finding maximum or minimum points. So first look at what are stationary points. Now if we consider this graph, the gradient along this graph is continuously changing. So if we consider separate points along this graph, the gradient of any tangent that we would draw to any of these points here is a positive gradient. But when we get to this point here, if we were to draw a tangent to that point there, then the gradient of that point would be zero. Any point down here would have a negative gradient until we get to this point here. And the gradient of that point, again, would be zero. As we continue up the graph here, the gradient is positive until we get to this point here. And the gradient of that point is again zero. And after that point, the gradient is positive again. These are called stationary points. If the gradient before the stationary point is positive and then after the stationary point is negative, then we call that a maximum. If the gradient before the stationary point is negative and after the stationary point is positive, we call that a minimum. If in fact the gradient before and after the stationary point is the same, in other words positive, zero gradient, positive, or going the other way, negative gradient, zero gradient, negative. We call this a point of inflection. These are all stationary points. These are called turning points as well. So a maximum and a minimum are called turning points. The three of them are called stationary points. Let's do a little reminder about differentiation. If we have the equation of a curve and we differentiate it, we get what we call dy dx. So let's differentiate 3 7 to 21 and drop that by 1 power to a 2. 2 8 to 16 and drop that by 1 power so it becomes a 1, which we needn't bother to write. If you differentiate 5x, you get just the 5. And if you differentiate a 7 or any number, they just go. This is called the derived function. This is the equation of the curve, whereas the derived function is the equation of the gradient. Now, there's nothing to stop us differentiating this again, so let's do that. 2 times 21, drop that by 1 power, so it becomes a 1. Differentiate the 16, and you'll get sorry, differentiate the minus 16x and you'll get just minus 16. Differentiate the 5 and that will disappear. This is called the first differential. This is called the second differential. And to indicate the dif second differential, we write this. Now, although these little numbers, these little indices, usually are thought of as squares, this has got nothing to do with squared at all. When we read it, we read it as d2y dx squared, but it has got nothing to do with squaring at all. It is just a way of indicating the second differential. The equation of the curve, the first differential, which is the equation of the gradient on the curve, and the second differential, which we're going to look into the use of that in this lesson. Another way of looking at what happens when you differentiate is that the first differential dy dx is how y is changing 
as x changes. The second differential, d2y dx squared, is how dy dx is changing as x changes. dy dx is the gradient, so d2y dx squared is in fact how the gradient changes as x changes. Just another little reminder about another way of writing this information. We could write the equation of the curve as a function. We call this the function of x. So we can differentiate it as before. 3 7 to 21. Drop that down to a 2. 2 8 to 16. Drop that down to a 1. Differentiate 5x and get just the 5. And differentiate the number. And it goes. And we indicate the first differential by putting a dash. This is the function of the curve. And this is the function of the gradient on that curve. So, when we differentiate it again, 221s, differentiate minus 16x and you get minus 16, differentiate the 5 and it is a number, and it goes. The second differential is indicating by putting f double dash. Now let's look at how to use the second differential d2y dx squared, or f double dash. This is a stationary point. Before this stationary point, the gradient is positive. After this stationary point, the gradient is negative. It's a maximum point. The gradient, as x increases, decreases x is going across the page and as x increases the gradient is decreasing. It's still decreasing because minus is decreasing from positive. So the gradient is continually decreasing. So in other words d2y dx squared is less than naught indicates a maximum point. Now let's look at this point here. The gradient coming down here is negative. The gradient going up here is positive. As x increases, the gradient is increasing. The gradient is increasing. In other words, d2y dx squared is greater than naught. And in this situation, we have got a minimum. I don't think it's necessarily easy to understand what I'm saying here, but if we just remember that if we work out the second differential d2y dx squared and it's less than naught, we have a maximum. If we work out the second differential d2y dx squared and it's greater than naught, we have a minimum. These are the two key pieces of information we need to remember. But what if d2y dx squared actually equals naught? It's neither less than naught nor greater than naught, it actually equals naught. Well then we have to go down another avenue and we have to study either side of the stationary point. If we find that the stationary point is going from positive to negative, then we know it's going to be a maximum point. If we study either side of the stationary point, and it's going from a negative gradient to a positive gradient, we know it's a minimum point. And if studying either side of the stationary point is going from a positive gradient and then continues as a positive gradient or we study either side of the stationary point and it goes from a negative gradient and then after the stationary point continues as a negative gradient then we know it's a point of inflection. So in fact if the second differential comes to naught this is in what we have to do, investigate 
either side of the stationary point to help us come to our conclusion what type of stationary point we have. Well, the